how to connect sensors to a Raspberry Pi, where to get the needed libraries, does everything just work or do we need some tricks? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The Raspberry Pi is very good at managing and displaying data from your sensors via network. Today we discuss possibilities to attach sensors directly to a Raspberry Pi. We will cover digital sensors, one-wire sensors, I2C sensors, SPI sensors, analog sensors and serial sensors. And we will have a look at how to program the Pi to read the sensors. All Raspberries offer a connector to connect sensors. Let's look at it. On this drawing, the 40 pins are colored for ease of use. These black pins are ground, orange pins are 3.3 volts and the red ones are 5 volts. Attention! Raspberries are damaged if we connect 5 volts at any pin. So always check your sensor's output either with a multimeter or the oscilloscope before connecting them to a pin. Raspberries are much more expensive compared to an Arduino or an ESP board. For my experiments I usually use this so-called T-cobbler, a connection to the breadboard. It is easy to use because it has labeled pins, but pay attention. The 40 pin connector does not fit with all cases. Here, for example, the space is too small. Some of my T-cobblers had wrong cables, so the pins were not at all as labeled. Very dangerous. This is why I check them with a multimeter. To be sure, I place the minus probe on the USB connector and the plus probe at 3.3, respectively 5 volts. If those pins show the right voltages, the chance the rest is OK is very high. Another possibility is to connect our wires directly to the header and use such a GPIO reference card board. I never liked these boards because the connectors do not stick with a full length. This is why I dumped them. The 17 green pins are general purpose and can be used to attach sensors and other things. The rest are special purpose pins. Some of them, like GPIO 2 and 3, are later used in this video. As with the Arduino, the GPIOs are numbered. This numbering is called BCM numbering. Some libraries can also use the board pin numbers. By the way, with the command pinout you get this information in your terminal. I use this laminated printout to have the information always handy. Next, we have to enable the protocols we want to use in the Pi configuration. I enable SPI, I2C and one wire for this video. Serial will be covered later. And we have to decide the programming language and libraries we want to use. Arduinos use the C++ language. The most popular language for the Raspberry Pi is Python. As we will see, it is easy to use and to debug. If you do not use the Pi desktop, you can write Python programs using your preferred editor and start them in your terminal window. If you are a beginner, I strongly suggest using the Pi desktop because the useful Tony is only available there. It is already pre-installed and simple to use, has auto-completion and even can debug your programs. By the way, if you enable VNC on your Pi, you can use the desktop remotely without attaching a display or a keyboard. Let's get started with the simplest sensors, digital sensors, which only output on or off. For such sensors, as well as to switch LEDs, we could use the GPIO Zero library. Unfortunately, this library is quite limited if it comes to sensors. Fortunately, we have a much better possibility. CircuitPython is an open source project for MCUs heavily supported by Adafruit. They used their vast experience with Arduino libraries to donate libraries for CircuitPython. We can also use those libraries on the Pi 
because the circuit Python drivers are now ported. Currently, 257 circuit Python libraries are listed. And the best, we will be able to use the same libraries with our ESP32 once we plunge into MicroPython on this platform. It is easy to set up these libraries with these four commands. I leave a link in the description where you can copy paste the commands. The second command is not needed if you use a recent Py image. If you want to use my examples, you have to add this command. It copies the needed files into the directory Raspberry Sensor Tutorials, where you can load them with Tony. Now we are ready to rumble. Let's start with typical digital sensors, a button and a PIR sensor. Buttons usually are attached between GPIO and ground. We have to either add a 10K pull-up resistor or to enable an internal pull-up resistor. The reading of the sensor pins is simple. We define a pin as with the Arduino and then we read its value. In our example, an LED is switched on when we press the button or the PIR sensor triggers. Both sensors are treated the same way. The only difference is the polarity. The switch is low or false if pressed and the PIR sensor is high or true when triggered. Next we attach this simple one-wire DS18B20 temperature sensor. With this command we can check if one wire is enabled. Default is GPIO pin 4. But because my Argon case uses GPIO 4, we have to use a trick and change it to GPIO 5 by editing the config.txt file. Right at the bottom we add this line. Now we can connect the sensors to GPIO 5. Because this sensor is attached as a device in Linux, its reading is different. You do not need to understand everything. Just use these two functions and it works. We get a vast selection of sensors using the I2C bus and many of them are supported by the CircuitPython libraries. So the chance the sensor for your project is supported is high. Let's test a simple BMP280 temperature, humidity and pressure sensor. We first have to install the library with this command. This time we have to connect it to the two I2C pins, which are GPIO2 and 3. The usual rules apply. If you add more sensors or extend the connection cable's length, you have to add pull-up resistors to the two data lines. For one sensor close to the Pi, these resistors are not needed. Now we can check the address of the sensor with this command and see that it answers on 76 hex. The library works similarly to the Arduino. We have to open the I2C connection and create a sensor object. Then we can read the values. Because my sensor uses 76 instead of the standard 77, we have to include this address in the call. Then we can set the sea level pressure and read the values in the Python loop. And it works flawlessly. Next is the 9DOF sensor BNO055. Again, we have to install the library and open the example file. It works similarly to the BME280. This sensor just provides more information. But unfortunately, the values often are wrong, as we see here with the temperature. Why is that? I2C sensors usually work with a clock frequency of 400 kHz. But the BNO055 seems to need some clock stretching. With a Raspberry, we need another trick. We have to reduce the clock speed. This is done by adding another line in the config.txt file. After rebooting, the sensor works OK and delivers proper values. I did not check all sensors, but assume that the other I2C sensors work with similar commands. You find a link to the documentation of all sensors in the video description. What's next? 
we sometimes use SPI sensors like the MAX 31855 high temperature sensor in our projects. So we have to see how we can use those sensors. We can check if SPI is enabled using these commands. Both should not trigger an error. As before, we install the library and load the program max31855.py. Unfortunately, I was not able to get useful results. At least the chip seems to work. If I disconnect the probe, it immediately discovers the fact. But I live in Switzerland and not in Siberia. So the temperatures should be a little higher. Let's continue with the next sensor class. Sensors with an analog output. Other than the Arduinos and ESPs, the Raspberry Pi does not offer analog inputs. This is why we have to attach an analog to digital converter for those sensors. I use the trusted and cheap ADS1115 4 channel 16 bit ADC. It is also connected via I2C and its address is 48 hex. Again, we have to install the library and load the program. Also here, the usage of the sensor works similarly to the Arduino. With this sensor, we have four analog inputs and we can add a second converter if we need more. Just change the address to 49 and connect the adder pin to 3.3 volts. The last sensors are sensors that provide serial data. As an example, we use the US100 ultrasonic distance sensor. To enable serial data, we have to start Raspi config, disable the shell and enable the serial connection. Now we can connect the sensor to the RX and TX pins. Pay attention, with this sensor the RX pin has to be connected to the PI's RX pin and TX to the TX pin, different from many other sensors. Now we can install the library and load the program. If we use the connection on the expansion connector, we have to use DEFTTIS0. If we used an FTDI adapter connected to one of the USB connectors, the respective connection would be DEFTTY USB0. The rest is as always. That's it. With this information, you can connect all kinds of sensors to your Raspberry Pi and use them in your Python programs. Conclusions. It is easy to connect all sorts of sensors to your Raspberry Pi's 40 pin connector. If you decide to work in Python, using the circuit Python libraries is an excellent choice. Programs written for the Raspberry Pi should also work on the ESP32 using circuit Python. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.